Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and boy, did I ever screw up this time. So let's explain to you what happened here. A couple of years ago, I added a couple of quarter turn valves on the two overflows from our fresh water tank. And the reason that I did that is if we filled the tank and then drove to our boondocking location, just from the water sloshing around, I would lose about 25% of my tank of water just from sloshing out those those overflows so i put those quarter turn valves in but i always had to remember that when i reached my destination or when i was filling the tank i had to make sure that those valves were open so that way our tank could breathe and i was in the process of getting ready to leave getting ready to hit the road for our travel season and one of the tasks i wanted to accomplish before we left was to sanitize my fresh water tank. So I had let the bleach and water solution sit in that tank for about 48 hours. I drained the tank and then I refilled it with the rinse water. However, when I refilled it with the rinse water, I forgot to open those valves. So I have a tank that's already full of air and I'm trying to fill that tank with 50 gallons of fresh water and there's nowhere for that water in that air to go. So what happened as this tank was filling, it kept expanding and expanding and expanding like a balloon until that expansion forced the tank to break the aluminum supports that were holding the tank in and bam, crashed right down on the ground. I swear, I'm surprised the University of Utah didn't record a seismic event from that coming crashing down. On top of that, it crashed down on top of my beloved uh, Eddy Line Fathom kayak that was laying underneath the trailer. Now how 500 pounds of a water tank crashing down on that ABS plastic kayak didn't crack the kayak I have no idea, but thank God for small blessings. Of course, I was in pure panic mode Friday night when this happened, and I was looking at all kinds of things that I could do because we're getting ready to head back out on the road uh, in a very short period of time. It's not like I can order a new tank, get it freighted out here to Utah, if I can even find the tank. That's not always that easy. Um, however, here's the damage. It did break off the drain valve that is spun welded to the bottom of the tank. That's not only a drain valve, it's also where my, it's my fill for the tank as well. So the tank is essentially useless without that and it won't hold water. It also took out the electrical wires that lead to my trailer brakes. Uh, of course, it ripped out all the corrugated material on the underbelly of the trailer. And uh, it did also take out my sewer hose holder that I had mounted underneath the trailer. All in all, I was pretty darn lucky. Now the problem with repairing that valve on the tank is the tank is made of polyethylene, which is a very slippery material. It's actually designed that nothing sticks to it. Uh, that's how it doesn't retain odors. That's how you can put acid in a polyethylene tank. Uh, it's a very robust material. So what you have to do is you have to spin weld the new fitting onto the tank and we'll explain that in a little bit but over the weekend i learned how the tank was supported up inside the the trailer uh real we fixed the brake wires i ordered a new sewer hose holder i ordered another roll of the corrugated material that uh, runs along the underbelly of the trailer so the biggest challenge i've got is getting this tank fixed now, the way that you would hear these valves to the tank is through a process called spin welding. 
and you can't use epoxy, you can't use any kind of adhesive because it won't stick to the polyethylene. So what they do is they actually have a special bit that holds the fitting and uses a high speed router to spin the material, to spin the fitting against the material of the tank. And that high speed spinning actually creates enough friction that it melts the plastic of the fitting and the plastic of the tank together. And that's called spin welding. It's a very easy process. It's not difficult to do, but the problem is the equipment is extremely expensive. A half inch high speed router is over 200 bucks and those actual tools, those jigs that hold onto the fitting, each one is specific to the fitting itself and each one is around 150 to 200 dollars each. So I'd be looking at spending over 600 dollars in tools that I would never need to use again. So I'm much better off seeing if I can find somebody here in Utah who does spin welding. And crazy as it sounds, with a few specific Google searches, I found someone right down the road, only four minutes away. Meet my savior, Kelly, who's welded polyethylene for 35 years, making custom tanks before retiring several years ago. He still takes on odd jobs here and there. So now while we're waiting for Kelly to do his thing, we're gonna do a little prep work to get our stuff ready for when Kelly's finished with the tank. I'm gonna to explain to you what we're doing here, and I'm also gonna explain it to you in the context of what Kelly plans on doing. This is the drain that I've removed from our tank. Uh, we had, you know, the, this would insert into the broken fitting in the tank, and then of course the water would drain out, and there was this valve here to be able to empty the water from our tank. This T in the center here is where we would either pressure fill our tank, the water would come in this way, uh, this valve would be closed so the water would be directed upward into the tank. It's also the way that our water pump draws water out of our tank when we're boondocking. I'm really not thrilled with this design. Once Kelly took a look at where our tank fitting was cracked along the edge of the fitting, rather than drill a larger hole and put a larger fitting in, Kelly decided it would probably be best, and I agree with him, to weld the polyethylene crack. So he's gonna weld that crack closed to the point where it'll actually be stronger than it was before it cracked. I wanna get rid of this T. So I'm also having Kelly install an identical fitting in the tank right next to it for filling and emptying the water tank. We'll still use a system like this on this fitting as our drain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manufacture another section like this without the T. We're going to reuse this fitting. We're going to, or uh, adapter or whatever you want to call it. We're going to reuse this valve. And I'm going to put a second one of these guys to go into the new fitting for the fill and empty and our water line, instead of going into this T, is going to come to a 90 degree fitting to go up into that water tank. Now, this material is a relatively hard plastic called PEX. It's a type of tubing that's used uh, throughout RVs. I guarantee you, you've seen PEX piping in your own RV. We got a short section of PEX right at Home Depot. As a matter of fact, Everything you see here we got right from Home Depot. This is a PEX cutting tool that will allow you to make a nice clean cut in the tubing. This is a clamp removal tool. So this will allow us to remove these metal clamps from our existing PEX tubing to be able to reuse this fitting in, in this valve. And then this is a crimp tool for clamping on uh, these metal clamps, uh, the new ones that we'll be replacing. Uh, and last but not least, this is just some pipe dope. Pipe dope is a, uh, a thread sealant uh, that goes right here on the threads to help to maintain the watertight integrity of our connections. 
So I want our new tank drain to be the same length as the old one. So this one is using about six and three quarters, now well, about seven inches of PEX tubing. So we're gonna measure this out. Seven inches is approximately right there. We're gonna take our PEX cutter, open the jaws. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. I just wanted approximately the same length. We're just gonna squeeze down until it cleanly cuts the PEX. Nice, clean cut, that'll be ideal. Now we're gonna to have to do the same with our old one. We're gonna move this aside for the moment. And we want to cut this as close to the clamp as we can to be able to remove the clamp. Okay, got that done. Now, this has actually has an adjustment. We have it set on half inch pecs, which is what we're working with. Uh, we're going to insert well, that isn't going to work. The way this is supposed to work is this little section right here is supposed to go inside the tubing. And that's great and all, but the problem is I've got that barbed fitting going in there and I'm not going to be able to reach that clamp. That's not going to go that way. Let me get some tin snips I've got. We'll try and cut it off using some tin snips. I've got here both some uh, tin snips and a small bolt cutter. I'm hoping I'll be able to get this off. The reason that I'm trying to reuse this is this one is made of plastic, so it's not going to corrode sitting underneath the trailer. Uh, all the ones they have at Home Depot are metal, and you saw on the ones that I added a couple of years ago to the tank overflow, those metal ones do have a habit of corroding. Let's see if we can cut this off somehow. No, nope, that's not going to happen. I may not be able to reuse this. Well, wait a minute. Score. Don't know where the heck that shot off to. Uh, but we managed to get the clamp open. Woohoo. All right. Let's just pull this off. Got it. There we go. Slide off the old piece of PEX. Well, we're going to have to cut that. Let's try to do this without accidentally nicking the table. Probably should put something down, huh? There. Success. Got it. Okay, we're going to be able to reuse that valve. Perfect. Okay. We got everything apart. Now it's time to put stuff together. We'll take our 7 inch length of PEX. One end is going to be that. And one end is going to be that. So let's grab a new clamp. Flip it over the pecs. Right up close to that fitting. Make sure that this clamp actually is over the barb. This one's kind of handy. Uh, this uh, little LED light comes on to tell you when you've applied a, the proper amount of pressure. I'll try to do this in a way that'll show you that. So we're just going to take the nub on the clamp, stick it into the jaws of the ratchet. We're going to ratchet it about seven times until the light comes on. There we go. All right. That clamp is on. Then we just turn this to release the jaws and we're all done. That's how you apply these clamps to the pecs. Uh, stick that on the tubing. 
put that back on. Slide that back down across the fixture. And we'll do the same thing. I'll turn it this way so again you can see the light. There we go. Let's release it again. And there's our new drain. Kelly is finished doing his thing. To weld the crack on the existing drain and to spin weld a new fitting for the tank's new fill and draw, Kelly charged me a whopping $65. I threw him a C note and told him to keep the change. I was so grateful for his services. Finding a new tank would have been a nightmare. From a number handwritten on the tank, I was able to determine that it was manufactured by Americart, but they only sell directly to wholesalers, and I couldn't find the tank available at retail anywhere. It would have been around 400 bucks, plus I would have had to ship it truck freight to Utah, so Kelly's repairs were a bargain indeed. Three of these steel supports are what held the tank to our frame laying in a north-south orientation across the frame's east-west cross members. But they bent a bit when the tank forced itself out from beneath our trailer, so I'm using a sledgehammer to straighten them out a bit. I first have to rewrap the underside of the tank with the reflective insulation that was there before. The second worst part of this repair was getting the tank back up into the trailer's frame a process that required the creation of some brand new yoga poses. Then, while holding the tank in position, I had to slide back into place the three steel tank supports. I can only imagine how much easier this is to do in the factory when they just drop everything into place from above, using gravity instead of fighting it the whole time. We'll make a clean cut at the end of our fill draw line. We'll add a little pipe dub to the threads for a watertight connection. Next, we'll insert the 90 degree barbed elbow into our new fill draw tank fitting. Now we'll clamp our water line onto the new fitting using the exact same process that we used when we created our new tank drain. Next, we'll reconnect the wiring to our four existing tank level sensors. Now, let's cut out the damaged section of our corrugated underbelly sheet in preparation for replacing it with new material. I found this roll of new corrugated underbelly sheeting right on Amazon. And at $157 for a 10-foot section, this surprisingly was the most expensive single component of this entire repair project. We're going to use the old damage section as a template for measuring and cutting our new piece, both for the length and width, but also for the cutouts for the drain, dump valve cables, and trailer brake wiring. With that now complete, we're going to take this opportunity to add one more cutout for an upgrade that we'll share with you next week in episode 305 of Grand Adventure. For now, though, know that placing and attaching this new section of underbelly sheeting was absolutely, hands down, the worst part of this repair. I was sufficiently frustrated by trying to get the correct placement that we didn't even film that portion of this repair. Had we filmed it, you would have heard only incessant sensor bleeping anyway. Suffice it to say that you only hope that you never need to do this job yourself. However, with the new sheeting now in place, we'll next apply underbelly tape, 
also found on Amazon, to each gap between the new and old sections of sheeting. Next, we'll use spray foam to seal around each opening. Finally, the final step in our restoration is to install the new sewer hose carrier in the same location that the old, now broken one was located. So that was a fairly miserable repair job. However, all in all, we got away with this fairly cheaply financially for a very stupid mistake. All told, I think I'm into this for about 300 bucks. I am so lucky that we found Kelly to be able to repair that tank for a reasonable cost because finding that exact tank and getting it freighted here in time for us to leave would have been an absolute nightmare. Coming up next week, we're going to show you what we were doing with this while we were cutting out our underbody, underbelly panel. Uh, so if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a Grand Adventure, which we air every Wednesday evening. By the time you're watching this, we are now less than a week away, just a few days away from us hitting the road for a full spring, summer, and fall travel season. So we're gonna be bringing you RV travel episodes for pretty much the remainder of 2023. We'd be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. If you like this episode, if you got a kick out of watching us for our stu stupid, stupid mistake. I, okay, I'm not gonna include Mrs. Grand Adventure in this my really, really stupid mistake. Please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comment section where we always love to hear from you after each episode. So until next Wednesday, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.